So <clears throat> let's look at one that's a little more complicated. Now, the only thing that's different about this one is there is two radicals. So what we have to do is we have to solve for one of the radicals first, go through and do it. When we get down to the end, we're going to still have a radical, and we're going to do it again. So this is going to be a long question, and I'm not going to lie to you. They're going to take you a while. So we have to go through this one rather slowly, but the first thing we're going to do is we're going to isolate for one of the radicals. doesn't matter which one we isolate for, so I'm just going to isolate for the first radical. So we're going to get square root. Oh, still in red here. Let's go back to black. The square root of 4x plus 5, and we're going to get is equal to 2 plus square root of 2x minus 1. Now, isolated for the radical, the next thing is square both sides. So this is going to become 4x plus 5. And the other one, if we square this out, and I'm just going to show you what happens when we square this, we're going to get 2 plus the root of 2x plus 1, or minus 1. We have to foil this out, so we're going to get 4 plus 2 square root of 2x minus 1 plus 2 square root of 2x minus 1 plus, I'm just going to show you this this way, 2x minus 1 squared. So you might not have seen that for a while, squaring a binomial with a quadra or with a radical inside. But when we combine like terms, we're going to get 4 plus 4 root 2x minus 1 plus 2x minus 1. So we got one more step to complete this, because we're going to get 3 plus 2x plus 4 root 2x minus 1 on one side, and the other side is going to become 4x plus 5. So that's how we got rid of the first radical. Now, to get rid of the second radical, we've got to do the same thing. Only this time, we now need to isolate for this radical right here. So if we isolate for this radical right here, what we're going to do is we're going to minus 3 and minus 2x from both sides. When we do that, we're going to get 2x plus 2 is going to equal 4 root 2x minus 1. Now, what I can do to make this a little bit easier on myself is I can divide both sides by 2, and I'm going to get x plus 1 is equal to 2 root 2x minus 1. And now we have to start again. We haven't isolated, we, or we have isolated for the radical, but now we have to square both sides. Now I'm going to square both sides on the next page here. So if I square both sides, I'm going to get x plus 1 and that's going to be squared, square, and we're going to get 2 root 2x minus 1. And we're going to square that. So we're going to get x squared plus 2x plus 1. And on this side, I'm going to get 4 times 2x minus 1. Remember, I have to square everything on the inside. So this becomes 8x minus 4, and I have x squared plus 2x plus 1. If I bring everything to the same side, I'm going to get x squared plus, sorry, not plus, minus 6x plus 5 is equal to 0. Now again, I have a quadratic. So I could complete the square, I could use the quadratic formula, but the first thing I always want to look for is factorability. Does it factor? Of course it does. It factors into 
x minus 1 and x minus 5 is equal to 0. So this tells us that x equals 1 or x equals 5. Now remember, because we're dealing with radicals here, we always have to check this. So we're going to check our solutions. So that was the original equation here. We have square root of 4x plus 5 minus the square root of 2x minus 1 is equal to 2. So let's check x equals 1. When we check x equals 1, uh, what we can do is we're just going to put 1 in for every x, and we're going to get square root of 4 plus 5 minus the square root of 2 minus 1. And the question is, does that equal 2? Well, this just becomes square root of 9 minus square root of 1. Does that equal 2? Well, is 3 minus 1 equal to 2? Definitely is. So x equals 1 is a solution. Now we've got to check x equals 5. Now there's nothing to say that both of these aren't going to work. There's nothing to say that both of them are, are going to work. That's why we always have to check. So we're going to get 4 times 5 plus 5 minus the square root of 2 times 5 minus 1. Does that equal 2? So this is going to be 4 times 5 is 20 plus 5 is 25, root 25, minus square root 10 times, or 2 times 5 is 10, minus 1 is going to be 9. Does that equal 2? Well, does 5 minus 3 equal 2? It definitely does. So that tells us that both solutions will work in this inequality, or in this radical equation. So that's why we always have to check. There may be extraneous roots. There's no guarantee that there will be.